In this lesson, we'll discuss batteries, voltaic cells, and cell notation. We're really working to get at the heart of what makes batteries work. Batteries are important to tons of devices we use every day, like our cars or like phones. How do they work? Well, they all rely on chemical reactions. Here's one example of a chemical reaction you could use to make a battery. We have here a copper wire. So notice that's a copper wire, shiny metal. This S stands for solid, so we have a solid copper wire. And then we have silver ions, AG plus is the symbol for silver, and they're floating around in solution there. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna combine those two things. Now, those silver ions aren't gonna be hanging out by themselves. They're usually paired with some anion, so perhaps somebody came along and put silver nitrate in there. And that's gonna dissociate into silver plus and nitrate minus. And the nitrate just doesn't really matter to our electrochemical reaction. And so we'll often just ignore it. But then later on, you'll see nitrate floating around and it will be mentioned. And so don't let that confuse you. It's just there to counterbalance the charge of ions in solution. Okay, so something interesting happens if we take this copper wire and we put it down in solution. What happens? We'll take a look. After that reaction runs for a little bit, you'll notice that the solution turns a light blue color and that there's a bunch of silvery crud hanging out in our solution. What's going on? Well, the electrons turn out to flow from copper to silver. So electrons would just rather be around silver than copper. We'll talk more about that in a second. As the electron runs from copper to silver, it makes silver into a solid. So it becomes a GS. It's reduced. Remember, to be reduced means to drop in charge from a positive value to a less positive value. So we went from positive one to zero. It's been reduced, and now it's a solid metal. If something's neutral, it's always a metal. It has to be charged to float around in solution. And that's, in fact, what's floating around in this here test tube is a bunch of silver metal. Okay, at the same time, the electrons coming from copper mean that the copper is now going to be an ion. So it becomes copper 2 plus, and it's aqueous now, which means dissolved. So that's, in fact, what makes our solution blue. So we have an electron transferred from one metal to the other, and it creates a solid silver, and it slowly dissolves that copper. Okay, cool. What does that have to do with batteries? Well, the electrons want to flow from one to the other, and we can take advantage of that. The electrons want to flow from one to the other, just like water wants to flow downhill. You might not ask very often, why does water flow downhill? But it's a reasonably good question. It flows downhill because it's more stable there. And it's just as if we have a copper solid up top, and the electron wants to flow downhill to our silver ions. And so if we separate these two into separate beakers and we connect them by a wire, we can actually make that electron run through a circuit to do work for us. Let me show you what I mean. Here what we've done is we've taken our copper metal and we put it in one beaker. And we've taken our silver ions and put it in another beaker. Again, probably a silver nitrate. And now what happens is my electrons still wanna go from copper to silver, so I've connected it with a wire to allow them to do that. And now what's gonna happen is my electrons are gonna flow through that wire and maybe they could power some sort of light bulb or whatever else we wanted with our circuit. That's a good light bulb. No, it's terrible. Don't lie to me, it's a terrible light bulb. Anyway, our battery could power it. Now, some special terminology you should know. This is called a voltaic cell, but basically it's just a battery. You might also hear it referred to as a galvanic cell. It just means we're running an electrochemical reaction and getting energy from it. Now, we also have some other terminology you're a little more familiar with, and that's anode, which is always gonna be drawn here on the left, and cathode, which is always gonna be drawn here on the right. The anode is basically like the negative terminal on your battery, and the cathode is like the positive terminal on your battery, so we have two terminals. Now, let's think about what chemical reactions are happening at each anode and cathode. At the anode, we have copper, which is solid, and it's actually becoming copper ions and giving off two electrons to flow through the circuit. And so those copper ions are aqueous. At the same time, over on the cathode, we have silver ions that are aqueous, and they're gonna go ahead and become silver metal, AGS. And that's gonna happen by combining an electron. So here an electron is a reactant. We call these two half reactions. So they're just the reactions that are occurring in each half of our voltaic cell. You'll notice that the one on the left is a oxidation reaction. So this is oxidation. Remember that oxidation is when electrons are given up. So we've taken away electrons from the copper. So that's an oxidation reaction. Meanwhile, on the cathode side, we're adding an electron. And so that's a reduction. 
And those always go together. A cathode always goes with reduction and an anode always goes with oxidation. One easy way to remember that is that anode and oxidation both start with vowels and that cathode and reduction both start with consonants, okay? So that's an easy way to remember what's going on at the anode and the cathode. Now, here's the deal. My electrons are traveling from left to right, right? So our electrochemical cell, as it is, just has electrons piling up on the right-hand side. So we get one, two, three, four, five. Eventually, this is going to become really negative. And this is going to become really positive. And electrons are just going to be like, no, 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 I don't want to go over there anymore. It's too negative. And the reason that happens is because we actually haven't even completed the circuit yet. So you might remember from another class that you always have to complete electrical circuits. The way we complete the circuit within a battery is with something called a salt bridge. I'll show you a better picture in just a second. But this salt bridge connects the left and right hand side. And just like the name sounds, it has a salt in it. And what happens is the ions can flow through this salt bridge to make the charge on each side neutral. Let's look at a better picture. So here's the salt bridge. Here's the flow of ions. And the salt bridge is important because it keeps each cell neutral by allowing ions to flow. So you can see here that the salt bridge is said to contain sodium nitrate. That nitrate is negatively charged and it can flow this way. Meanwhile, the sodium is positively charged and it can flow this way. So what that means is to keep the charge neutral, the electrons are flowing to the right and then my anions are gonna flow to the left while my cations flow to the right. And this completes this circuit and allows it to continue putting off energy. So remember that the salt bridge keeps each cell neutral by allowing the ions to flow. Now, this is a lot to write. So we want some shorthand way to indicate what cell we have. How does that work? Well, we always start on the anode and then we proceed left to right. So on the anode, the very first thing we see is copper metal. And so that's what we're gonna write first in our anode for our cell notation. Then we're gonna exit that anode and we're gonna cross into a solution. Whenever we cross into a new phase, we're gonna put a vertical line. So we'll put a vertical line and what do we cross into? Well, we cross into copper nitrate. Remember I said very often the ions are counterbalanced by nitrate and that's the case here. So we have copper nitrate and I should also put the concentration. That's an important piece of information about what's in that cell. So I'm gonna put one molar copper nitrate. Now, as I continue to go from left to right, I'm going to cross into the salt bridge. To indicate the salt bridge, I use two vertical lines, okay? And then I'm gonna write what's over on this other side, which is silver nitrate. Again, it's one molar and it's aqueous. So I'm gonna put one molar silver nitrate. All right, that is aqueous. Okay, next up, I'm gonna cross into my silver metal. And that's where my cell notation ends. So I'm going to put A, G, solid. So that's my cell notation. Notice these are barriers between an anode or a cathode and solution. And this guy is my salt bridge. So that's how we can always write cell notation. And we'll practice that again in just a second. Let's go ahead and answer these questions using the cell diagram to the right. First, it says draw the cell notation for the voltaic cell below. Okay, well, once again, we start on the anode and we see that we have magnesium metal. And so that's the first thing we'll draw, magnesium metal. And we'll put a vertical line. And then we see that next we go into our solution, which is magnesium chloride. So I'll put 0 0.1 molar magnesium chloride. Then I put my salt bridge. That's always gonna be what I write after my first solution. So I go into here through the salt bridge and then I come out of the salt bridge and suddenly I hit 0 0.2 molar iron chloride. So that's what I'm going to put over there, 0 0.2 molar iron chloride. And lastly, I go on to my cathode. So I put another vertical line and I'm going to go on to my cathode, which it says is a platinum cathode. So I'm just going to put PT solid. Okay, so that's my cell notation. Now it asks, what half reaction is occurring at the anode? All right, so we know the anode is on the left-hand side and we know the anode is made of magnesium. So we're going to start with magnesium. And then we might recall that at our anode, we always have oxidation. That is something giving up electrons. And you also see here, we see this Mg2 plus written. So what we're gonna write is Mg is oxidized to Mg2 plus, plus two electrons. The next question asks, where is reduction occurring? Okay, well, if we recall, reduction always occurs at the cathode. So we could say at cathode 
and that would be fine. Or we could say at the platinum electrode, and that's also fine. Both are true. Where is oxidation occurring? Well, we've already said that. It's at the anode, or we could say at the magnesium electrode. Also great. So that's a basic introduction then to our electrochemical cells and how batteries work.